Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide. Mohammed Niaz with you. In this video, we're gonna see how to extend your Windows File Server with Azure File Sync. This is our second video in Azure File Storage. In the first video, we talked about what is Azure File Storage and how it works. And also we demonstrate how to use Azure File Storage. So in this video, we're gonna see how to extend the storage capacity of a Windows file server with Azure File Sync. Azure File Sync is a feature or a service from Azure File Storage. So once you create Azure File Storage in Microsoft Azure, you can enable this feature Azure File Sync and by this way, you are able to synchronize your on-premises Windows file server with Azure File Storage. One of the important advantage and point that you all need to realize is Azure File Sync is not just help you to uh, have a copy of your file server in uh, Azure File Storage. It helps you to extend the storage capacity, which means when you have an issue with the storage capacity, Azure File Sync can provide cloud tiering, which means the less frequently accessed the data can be tiered to cloud by this way, you are able to run your file storage or file server with the limited space that you have without expanding your hardware storage capacity. Let's understand about cloud tiering. Cloud tiering is an optional feature of Azure File Sync. So when you enable cloud tiering in your Azure File Sync, the frequently accessed files are cached locally on the server while the other files are tiered to Azure File Storage based upon the policy that you configured. So for example, when a file is tiered to Azure File Storage, then Azure File Sync gonna replace that file locally with a pointer. So whenever a user try to open a tiered file, Azure File Sync seamlessly recall that file data from Azure File Storage. This is how a OneDrive or a Google Drive work. When you have a Google Drive or OneDrive installed in your desktop, you double click on a file, it seamlessly downloads to your desktop and you can use it. You may get some lag in opening the file based upon the internet speed and size of the file. But the good thing here is you are not moving the entire data to Azure File Storage. You have a locally cached copy of your file and you only move cool data which are not frequently accessed. In a storage data, we divide the data into two types. One is hot data which are frequently accessed or that was recently opened will be considered as hot data. And a file that is barely touched or not been accessed for some time will be considered as cool data. In Azure File Sync, you have option to set up a threshold value. So whenever your Windows file server, on-premises Windows file server reach above the threshold value that you set it up, for example, 80% is your threshold value and your Windows storage uh, reach to 82%, then the 2% of the coolest file gonna upload to Azure file and you get a free space of 20% always maintained in the on-premises file server because of this cloud tiering. Now let's move to the demonstration part. Following are the tasks that we need to execute here. There are some tasks need to be executed on the on-premises and then some configuration need to be done on the Azure portal. So we will see uh, step by step. All the steps are very simple and easy to do, but you just need to follow in the same order. Let's start our demonstration. What you see now is my file server. So I have a file server and I'm going to create a new volume so that I can create folders and share to my users and other devices in my organization. So this is demonstration. So that's why I'm going to create a new one. If you have an existing file server, you can do the same step on it. You don't need to uh, create a new server and create a new file share. You can work on the existing one because that is a title or that is a core idea of extending a Windows file sh share using Azure file share. So now the drive is ready and uh, let's go and find it that is E file share and I'm gonna copy some uh, content to our the file share so that we once we sync we can verify that the data is uh, 
uh, synchronizing with uh, the Azure file share. Now the file server is ready. We have some uh, demonstration data inside the file server so that we can check the synchronization with the Microsoft Azure file share once it's done. So let's go back to Azure portal and create a storage account. In the beginning of this demo, we see how to create a storage account. So it's quite easy for you. Just go to storage accounts, then click on the add button and create a new storage account. For this demonstration, I'm going to create a new resource group. If you have an existing resource group and you have some virtual machines on it, you can choose that if you want to connect this file share to that existing virtual machines. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a new resource group, then give a storage account name and that need to be unique, then choose a location. Uh, better to choose the same location what you have uh, for the other resources. Once you complete the wizard and pass it the validation, then click on create to, store, to create a storage account. Now, now the file share is ready. Now the storage account is ready. Let's go and create a file share. Then click on file share to create a new file share. Enter a name for a file share. I'm going to name Win 2016 Sync. Then you can mention the capacity that you need. As this is a demonstration purpose, I'm going to create a 2GB. You can go up to 5 terabyte here. Now the virtual machine is ready. Now the storage account is ready. File share is ready. Next step is to install Azure PowerShell module. In order to install Azure File Sync, we need Azure PowerShell module. So just run this small command install module, then hyphen name AZ, then just process and complete the installation. So the next step we have is to create Azure File Sync. As I mentioned before, Azure File Sync is a, is a feature inside Azure Storage, Azure File Storage. So for that, uh, go to Create Resource and search for Azure File Sync, then click on Create Azure File Sync. Then you can see you have four choices. Uh, first one is to select the subscription. The second one is to select the resource group. You need to make sure that you choose the same resource group that you have chosen for the storage and file share that we have just created before. Then make sure you have uh, uh, selected the same region also. So give a meaningful name for the storage sync service, then click to create as your file sync. The next step is to create a sync group. Now the deployment is completed. So let's go to the resource that is our Azure file sync. Uh, we named it Windows 2016 synchronization. So the next step is to create a sync group. Click on sync group to create a new sync group. Then enter a meaningful name for sync group. Here it is file sync group. Then select your subscription. Then select the storage account that we created for this demo. Now the storage account has been selected. So in the last list, you will see a drop down list that is Azure File Share. So, this Azure File Share is going to synchronize with your local on premises Windows File Server. So, let us create, go and click on Create. Now, the sync group has been completed. Next, we're going to download and install Azure File Sync Agent for your on-premises Windows File Server. For that, go to the download link that is given below in the description. Then choose the right agent version based upon your operating system. Then click on Save to download it. Once you complete the download, double click and initiate the installation. The installation is straightforward. You just need to complete the wizard. If you have a proxy, then configure it here. Otherwise, click next. Then choose your options 
for Microsoft update of Azure Sync Agent. We can also schedule it here. Then click install. Here the installation of Azure Sync Agent has completed. The next step is to configure it. For that, go to Azure File Sync. What we're going to do here is we're going to register this Windows file server to the storage sync that we have created in the previous step. For that, you need to enter your Azure credentials here. Enter username. Then following to that, enter the password for that. Click on sign in. Now we have three options to be filled up here. As your subscription based upon your subscription choose one then select the resource group where you have created the file share and storage sync then select the storage sync service that we have created just before then click on the register button this is gonna register this Windows on-premises file server to Azure file storage sync group now the registration has successful Click OK and close the wizard. Now go back to Azure portal and navigate to the sync group that we have created in the previous session. Then double click on the sync group and now you can see add server endpoint option and from the you can from the drop down list you can select the registered server because we completed the agent installation and you can mention the path here you can see a uh, d full colon slash data there is an example here here our folder is e so i'm just putting e full colon slash so this is how to add a server endpoint and then we have two options one is cloud tiering and the other one is offline data transfer cloud tiering is very important because this helps really to extend your windows file server to cloud and your windows server file act as a cache for your files so even if you have one terabyte or two terabyte data you don't need your uh, on-premises file server to have the same capacity you can uh, have like a 500 GB or something and also anytime when a user select uh, a data uh, even if it is not in the in the on-premises file server like how your OneDrive or Google Drive work today the same way it seamlessly download the file and give a better experience to the user and you have two options in cloud theory you can specify the amount or the percentage that need to be free up in the Windows on-premises file server and also you can specify the number of days it means if you specify 100 days here then any data above 100 days uh, will be removed from the Windows file server and shifted to cloud uh, tier so when user try to access this file as I said before it downloads to the on-premises file server and give a better experience to your users. Offline data transfer is something different like if you have a large uh, amount of file then and your network is not that fit to transfer those high volume of data then you can choose offline data transfer which is like uh, an Azure data box you will get it is a hardware that you need to copy the things here there then send it to microsoft they will upload it for you then only the changes you need to sync uh, uh, after the azure data box so those are the two options when you add a cloud uh, cloud when you add a server endpoint to uh, azure file sync group so now click to create and this will add the server endpoint to file sync group now you can see one server endpoint that is our file server has been added and you can see uh, the health status is provisioning and also uh, the server endpoint creation is in progress you can see from the top so after this process this steps the file that contain at e drive that is our file server uh, will be synchronized with uh, uh, this file share that we created under the storage account 
now let us go back to the storage account and Azure file share and see how the synchronization going on for that go to the storage account then select file share then this is our file share now you can see all the file has synchronized so the synchronization has completed you can verify this was our uh, on-premises folder so now all the file share has completed when you go back to the sync group you can see uh, the upload and download details here the file synced how many files synced and how many downloads happen and also the last sync activity if you want to troubleshoot or something then you can see the last synchronization activity and also you can see details about the cloud tiering also so that is all about azure file sync i hope you have enjoyed this uh, video and thank you for watching and for more videos subscribe my youtube channel